week's episode. A thumbs up helps us a lot. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Enjoy. Located on Mexico's Pacific Baja coast, amongst the surrounding arid mountains and desert plains in the region, lies a lush, beautiful world. Protected from the open Pacific Ocean by the barrier island of Isla Magdalena are dozens of acres of waterways and mangrove forests. One of our favorite things about Magdalena Bay is these main grove channels right here. The whales are awesome, the dunes are awesome, but exploring these tiny little side channels are just really cool. You never know what's around each bend. Beautiful mangroves. Pretty cool. The further up you get, the more the mangrove channel just kind of like closes in around you and it's just a narrow little channel. Just you, the water, beautiful mangrove well, trees all around. I think we're at an end. End of the line. This is it. Nowhere else to go with this one. Time to turn around. paradise for water and shorebirds, these waterways have large tidal swings, flushing out fish and revealing large sandbanks as the water recedes. Home to a diversity of plants and animals, Isla Magdalena has recently been designated a natural protected area, and all of the land here is protected. However, the waterways do not fall under this designation, and we were surprised to find local fishermen up here away from the main bay, creating a complete blockade of the narrowest mangrove channels, catching all of the fish that come in and out at low tide in their nets. Even though the waters are not yet protected, protecting the island is a great start. Although at first glance the scrub brush here may seem rather barren, it is full of interesting and beautiful plants and a variety of animals, including coyotes and rabbits. Hillary's fiddling tonight's catch. Yeah, you had an awesome catch here. We got a corvina and two porgy. Fish for dinner finally. It's gonna be nice. Bit of mashed potatoes and a slaw. And look at the sunset going down over the mangroves. Beautiful. I'm up in one of the little mangrove channels right now. Gonna go check it out, see what's up here. Check out these awesome, amazing, very cool plants. Here in Magdalena Bay, there are two different types of mangroves. The ones behind me, these are red mangroves. They're the ones that have the really kind of long stringy roots um, that sprout down and they just are super, super thick. It's kind of like a vine or a tube that just comes down to the ground and there's tons of them. These guys behind me here, this more tree looking plant is also a mangrove. This is a white mangrove. 
and I think they're beautiful. They're my favorite up here. It looks like a tree, it grows in the water, amazing. So these mangroves are actually a bit different than a normal plant. A normal plant produces like a dormant seed, it gets spread, it grows somewhere. These guys actually produce live young, basically. There's a long bean pod looking thing and that is actually alive and it actually requires a period of floating around in the water. So we see these these long pods floating everywhere in Magdalena Bay here from the red mangroves. For that little start to grow, it actually has to be floating around in the water for at least 40 days. And it can float around for up to a year and still be alive in there. And then once it washes up on a sandbank, finds a home where it doesn't get moved around, it kind of takes a little bit of a hold, somewhere where it's not going to wash away, then it has a 15 day period until it actually roots. And these guys are a little bit different in the red mangrove, they're obviously not as viney looking. And the way these guys reproduce, kind of similar to the red mangrove, except for their little offspring, it's a little tiny seed, it kind of looks like an almond. And once it drops in the water, it takes eight days of floating around. And then once it finds a home, after those eight days or more, it takes five days to sprout roots. But unlike the red mangroves, which can float around for up to a year um, and still be alive, these white mangrove seeds only last about 30, 35 days. One of the reasons these plants are so cool and so important is that they actually hold a ton of carbon. Out of all the world's coastline, less than half a percent is made up by mangroves. However, mangroves contain 10 to 15 percent of the ocean's carbon. They suck it up, they process it, they hold it in their roots, in the soil around them, in the actual plant itself. So really important for the environment. It's just amazing, these mangrove forests up in here, it's, they create their own little world and habitat. There's so much stuff that lives in here. So many different kinds of birds, shellfish, there's snails all over the ground, like a carpets of snails, oysters growing on the roots of the mangroves, tons of different clams and shellfish, crabs, not to mention all of the fish that also find shelter in the mangroves here tons and tons of fish. There's dolphins that come up in the deeper channels. Amazing amount of life. We heard, all morning we heard uh, a whole bunch of coyotes going off just on the other side, right, kind of right behind these mangroves. They tend to go out for, you know, a few hundred feet and then it just goes back into those kind of sand dune plains. Yeah. A lot of, lot of coyotes out there made, made a kill, I guess. I guess, yeah, all the coyotes, I think they eat the rabbits out there. I don't know what else they eat, but there's a lot of rabbits for them. A lot them. of rabbits. We've seen them down on the water too, like fishing. Fishing, yeah. It's crazy the amount scavenge. of life on this like tiny, I guess it's not a tiny island, Isla Magdalena is huge, long, like more than 70 miles long, but very narrow little, basically just sand strip. Very low elevation too, right? Other than I guess the, the, the mountainish area at Magdalena itself, the village, and then also at Bahia Santa Maria. Mm-hmm. Other Everything than that, it's pretty much like sand dunes. 100 feet high, sort of thing. It's barely above sea level. Yeah, it's crazy. I'd love to know how the island got formed, but pretty cool island. We're just hanging out up here in the mangroves. We kind of took it all the way. We're almost at the end. We've probably got another few hundred feet that we can 
wander up into here in the top of the high tide right now. So. Should be turning pretty soon. We have reached the end. Officially the end as far as we can go here. We're not going to be able to go through any further here with our Juna. Nope. Some beautiful white mangrove trees here blocking the way. It's very peaceful up in here. Although we can hear the ocean. For some reason in the mornings you can really hear the ocean, which is still four Big miles away. roar of water, yeah. And it's always really loud in the morning. I'm, maybe that's just because there's no other it's noises. it's so quiet, yeah. Very high tide. Red mangrove, white mangrove. Might come back up here at low tide. At low tide, we can actually Whoa. go right underneath. Yeah. The mangroves, kind of cool branches you can hang in and sit and stuff. Yeah, low tide. The white mangroves are my favorite. They're beautiful. It's like a tree that lives underwater 50% of the time. Right now, though, this might be some good oh, fishing. Watch out, tree. What? Tree. Uh oh. We made it through. Oh, yeah, this has got a bit of a white mangrove. Is that what that is? Yeah. Along with the miles and miles of mangrove forests, Isla Magdalena is also a land of huge, beautiful white sand dunes.
After wandering just a little ways from the water into these dunes, it feels as if you've been transported to an entirely different region of the world. Climbing to the top of a dune and looking out, with nothing but more dunes in sight, you'd think that you were in the Sahara Desert. For us, the contrast between lush green mangroves and sparkling white sand is one of the things that makes this place so special and unique. And when the tide is low, the sand and mudflats that are revealed are another unique place all their own. Crazy. It's like with the super low tide we have right now, you feel like you're walking through a forest. But when the tide comes in, it's way up. The super high tides that we're having with the full moon right now actually cover this first layer of leaves. So it's a lot of water to come in and out of here. And the roots are just amazing. They sink. All the way out here on this sandbar, we're quite a ways from the mangroves, but bloody coyote tracks. The guys come all the way out here and wandered out to the end. We didn't see him, but this wouldn't have been too long before we got here, I guess. Pretty stealthy, guys. sunrise and the moon set. That's all for this time, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you for always being there and supporting us. Be sure and leave your comments down below. Give us a thumbs up and be sure and subscribe. That's all. Adios. Cheers. I cannot believe what just happened. Do I have to touch it? <laughs> this fish pick it up? Well, literally ready? jumped like four feet in the air while we were going through the mangroves and landed in the dinghy. We caught a snook. A snook. We've never had a snook before. With no hook, he just jumped to the like boat. Like four feet in there, jumped, Do you landed I've been in the dinghy. Him hurting me, or will he like stab me? Or yeah, he's gonna kill you. That's your catch. Catch of the day. But how do I pick him up? You, you should have to come pick him up. <laughs> I was going to. I was all ready to pick him up, and then I thought, look at all those fins on him. He could like stab me and stuff. Is there anything you'd like to say seriously? That was serious. He literally jumped in the boat like that. How did it just, it like, literally, like, he, we're, like, we're just finished, we just put the drone down, and then we're, like, leaving with the motor running, whoosh, whoom, in front, <laughs> it was crazy looking.